Hello everyone, welcome to a Blender Branch tutorial. I'm Kenan Prophet, and in this tutorial it's going to be a couple of camera tips for you. We're going to learn how to pull focus from one object to another, and then we're going to learn how to animate a camera along a path in a smooth motion and combine that with the art of pulling focus from object, different objects in your scene. So let's get right into it. So I have this basic scene here, which is um, I'll just show you in the rendered view. Just a compass and a globe uh, sitting on a rather large desk. It's just dark background all around. I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel of how to create this compass, if you're interested in that. It's a pretty cool little model there. And there's some rust on it. And it's actually animated. I don't know if you can see that. The samplings won't catch up. But that middle thing spins. Anyway, that's not important. Um, maybe you can see it better there. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing is creating a shallow depth of field and we're going to pull the focus, which is similar to if you were creating a live action movie, you would do this all the time. You would have one character in the foreground, for instance, our um, compass here. And you'd have that in focus and everything else in the background out of focus and then you would pull focus to the thing in the background. So we need a camera, so I'm going to press Shift A, add in a camera, and just get this into position Oops. by rotating. I'll look through the camera viewport. So a common way to do this, or a really simple way, you see you have your scene here and everything is in focus. So what I want to do, I'm going to select this top part of the compass. I'm going to press Shift S, put cursor to selected. Now I'm going to press Shift A and add in an empty plane axis. And what I'll do, I'll just press N to bring up this sidebar. And I'll name that empty right here under item. I'll name this focus. I'll make sure this empty, it didn't quite stick to the top of that. I want it to sort of glide along the top right there. And now if we select our camera and come over here to the camera tab settings and come down to underneath depth of field, you see this menu focus and we can just select our empty that we've named focus. And so now that tells our camera to focus on this empty. So if I increase under aperture, we want to leave it on radius. If I increase the size of that to one, and if we add some blades, let's go eight and a rotation of eight. Now if I press shift Z to see the rendered view, you can see this compass is barely in focus, but everything else is just completely blown out. That's because we have a really high value of one. And that creates ridiculously shallow depth of field such that <laughs> I don't I don't know if there's a real lens that actually can do that. Um, so it's far too much, but I wanted to show you the effect it's having. So if we just dial this back to say 0.2, that's something a little more realistic. And you can see we now have our compass in focus and our globe is nicely blurred. Now if you were to want to pull focus, say from you wanted to create an animation of having the camera focus on the compass and then switch the focus to the globe. It's very, very easy. I'm going to go back to uh, non-rendered view mode here. And we'll jump to say frame 40. And I'm going to select this empty. I'm going to press I. And the keyframe animation menu comes up. We're going to select location and rotation. And now we're going to jump about, I found um, 40 frames is pretty good for the, the timing of a pull focus. Now it's not the greatest, um, and different animations require different timings. Sometimes you want a real quick pull, sometimes the slow and dramatic are better. So you just have to figure that out based on your animation. So I'm just moving this to the front of the globe where I want to be in focus. Maybe right there. 
And I'll just add in another location rotation keyframe by pressing I. So now if we scrub through this, that empty moves from our compass to the globe. So if I get on the frame where it's on the globe and we press Shift Z, you can see we have reversed the effect. Our globe is now nicely in focus and our compass is blurred. So if you see, it's hard to see, I know the samplings don't catch up. But back to here, compass is in focus. And now the globe is in focus. And you have successfully pulled focus in your shot. And it's just something really cool. It helps to really sell the real aspect of your scene if you're creating an animation. And it fools people because the thing about animation is um, we have to mimic all the imperfections of a camera, which technically the shallow depth of field started as an imperfection and then it became a cinema quality that was specific only to Hollywood cinema, which is kind of funny, slightly interesting, but a uh, little history tip there for you, tidbit. Anyway, um, so that's it. That's polling focus. Very, very easy. And um, it's a little bit boring, though. So if we want to add in a step of the camera movement, we can do that as well. So let's just kind of start over. I'm going to delete this empty. I'll also delete my camera. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate a camera along a path to get a really kind of smooth, suspenseful camera motion. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to jump back to frame one. I'll come over here and just press Shift A and add in a curve and a bezier curve. And if you can see that curve right here, if I press tab, we'll be able to manipulate this curve. And we want to make sure that it's pointing the direction we want our camera to actually go. And it is. So now what we can do is rotate these handles and start grabbing them and creating a path for our camera to go on. Now, it's kind of tricky to plan out the path of your camera. But if you think of it sort of like setting up tracks for a dolly, if, it, if this were a real life scene and you were shooting a, a kind of a dolly shot, pushing in on a compass or even a crane shot, this was probably more of like a crane shot. Think of it as sort of setting up the track for that. So we want, we want to sort of establish where we're going to end up first. So we're going to end up pretty close to our compass, maybe about right there. And we'll start kind of working backwards. So I want it to push in on the compass. If we go to top mode, we'll kind of get a better grasp of where we are. And now we can extrude backwards. That's no problem. It'll still keep the same direction. And I want it to sort of swoop in, but I want it to come from a pretty severe angle getting that sort of high crane feel. Like I said, try to think of it as setting up either your dolly tracks, if this were a real life scene, or your crane. I don't know if any of you have done any real life cinematography. Um, I've done some, and it really helps with animation. It helps you have a better understanding of how to work your camera and animation and all that good stuff. Okay, so I'm, I'm just sort of making this interesting. I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to kind of curve around, not just be a straight fluid line. So I'm rotating, adjusting these handlebars. I sort of, Bezier curves, I, I love them and I hate them. <laughs> they sort of drive me nuts with how uh, the handles and everything. I don't know, I just get, I just get confused. I get, I'll press N, get rid of that, give me some more space here. Um, so this is pretty good, you know, we'll adjust it later once we get our camera in there. But that's uh, kind of the basic idea. So now what we need to do, I'll go to top view. Hopefully you can see this okay. But I'm going to go to this last point here. I'm going to press Shift S and do Cursor to Selected. And I'll press Tab to go into Object Mode and I'll press Shift A and add in a camera. And we want to clear the rotation of that, so I'm just going to press Alt-R, or Option-R if you're on a Mac like I am. And now 
I'll just, with the camera selected, we wanna press shift and right click on the path that we created. And now with those both selected, if we just press control P, this parenting menu comes up and we just wanna select follow path. So now if we play it, you can see it follows that path in a horrible manner, but it ends right at frame 100. So what we need to do with this curve selected, make sure you're in the curve settings in this tab over here. And under path animation, change the frames to the length of your timeline, which in my case is 150. And now if you play that, it slows the camera down and it'll follow the curve, the length of your timeline. So obviously that's absurd. We have our camera dancing around and I don't even wanna show you what it looks like through the camera viewport because I'd give you a headache. <laughs> I might scale this down a bit just to give us room. So what we need to do is have this camera lock to our empty or our point of focus. So we deleted our empty. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not sure why I deleted that empty, but I did. So we'll just add a new one. Uh, empty, plain access. And there we have it, I got it hovering on the top there. And I'll bring up this sidebar and name it focus again. You don't have to name it focus, but I like to. It's just easier for me. Okay, so now we have our empty selected there. And we need to track our camera to that empty. So this is kind of the tricky step. Um, but at least it's been tricky for me. You want to be in top mode. And the important thing to, to pay attention to here is where the top of this camera is pointing. And currently it's pointing in the Y axis. So what we want to do, come over here to this chain link, add an object constraint with our camera selected, and select track two. And now this section where it says up, that's what I was talking about. It's asking which axis the camera is pointing up from the top view. Don't ask me why it's like that. I don't really understand it at all, but that's just the way it works. So we have to change this from the Z axis to the Y. And now if we go to the front view and we see this blue arrow, that's pointing up in the Z direction. So since we want this camera to point down, then where we have this target two, we need to put that in the negative Z. Again, I don't fully understand that, but that's just the way it works. So now, our target object is our focal point, and that's the empty we created. And boom, you do all those things properly, you should have the camera point directly to your empty just like that. So now if you scrub through, it follows that path perfectly right to wherever that empty is. So if we look through the camera, you can see we have this cool sweeping camera motion move in on our compass. Obviously, it looks like it's about to crash because it's just going for it all the way in. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. But we'll adjust that. But we'll adjust that and make it look like it's pulling focus to our globe because that's what we want. So I'm pretty happy with that camera motion if we sort of look at it from the rendered view. Starts off with the compass, you can see the top of it, you know it's a compass, and then it sweeps in on it kind of slow and mysteriously. And that's pretty cool, that's what we want. But we don't want it to just end up on our compass because that's not very exciting. We want it to pull focus and pull the movement to our camera. Now, even though our camera is locked on this path, that doesn't change the fact that we can still move our empty wherever we want to. So if you think you like the focus on the compass, maybe till about frame, oh, 100 or so. So I'm gonna, just like we did before with the pull focus, press I, add a location and rotation keyframe, jump about 40 frames and move that to our globe, wherever you want that globe to be in focus. So 
So now I'll press I, location and rotation. I might rotate it a little like this, bring it out just a tad, and redo that location, rotation. Okay. So now you see because it's tracked to that empty, the camera still follows the path, but it tracks to that focus point, to our empty. Now I wanted to end up with a little bit more of our compass in the shot. So what I might do is still adjust this empty. Maybe bring it down just a tad. Or actually what I'll do instead of that, I'll adjust our path because you can move the path. I'll just sort of bring it over a little bit more and maybe out some. And there we go, that gets more of our compass in our final shot. But again, it doesn't change where the camera is pointing. That's very, very cool. You really just cut out a lot of steps of just normal keyframing animation. When you have these things linked to different tracks and you know following a path. And you can see now that it that it, the focus is on that empty, but we what we haven't done is made Currently the camera is just tracking to that. The focus, it's not um, doing the shallow depth of field. So we need to select our camera again, come over to the camera settings and underneath focus, change it to focus. We'll change the size to 0.2 again. We'll add some blades, maybe eight for each. Now if we see what that looks like, our compass is very, very blurred and our globe is nicely sharp in focus in the background. But if you pull out, a little. You can see now wherever our wherever our empty was on the compass, you can see our compass nicely in focus and everything else is blurred. So for sure show you what it's looking like from the top top of our crane shot here. It's looking very cool. You have that very shallow depth of field. Everything on the desk is sort of blurred. And then it moves in we pull the focus to our globe. And that's very cool. So that's it. And again, maybe you can play around with this. I didn't really want my compass in the dead center of my final shot. Maybe something like there is a little more interesting. You can just rotate this path around a little. Get it sort of how you want it. But I don't want to bore you with me going over and over. It takes a little bit of practice figuring out where that path is going to end up and what your final shot's going to look like. But for now, I'd say that looks pretty cool. We have our globe nicely in the background, in focus, and we have our compass very, very blurred in the foreground. And you have successfully animated your camera in a smooth, fluid motion along a path, and then had the camera pull focus from one object to another. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you can use this information to create some cool art and some cool animations. Thanks for watching.